Hello appraisers, this is Brandon with Choice Valuation and in this Spark Spotlight video, we're gonna be covering how to get the data from Spark into your actual Alamode report. Before I get into that, what I wanted to point out here, because it will make a difference for you, is that there are, are essentially three sides to Spark. You've got the grid side, which is what we're looking at here. You've got the market conditions analysis or 1004MC side, and you've also got the cost data side for when you're doing the cost approach. Now, when you hit export to send the data over into your all mode report, it, Spark is going to package up everything that you've done on any of these three sides of Spark. So if you've just done the grid, it's only gonna send the grid, but if you've done the grid and the MC or whatever combination, it's going to package that all up. So if you're ever unsure, and because what a lot of appraisers will do is they will leave Spark open overnight and then they go out and inspect the property and they come back and they've already loaded in the grid into their all in mode report but then the next day they come in here they just hit the 1004 mc button load in the market conditions analysis stuff and when they hit export they forgot that they still had the grid in there and then spark will load the grid information again which can cause issues if you've already you know made modifications to your grid in your all in mode report so if you're ever unsure um well first of all i would not recommend leaving spark open overnight just start it new the next day that'll also guarantee that you get the most recent updates to spark uh, but if you're ever unsure you can always hit this start over button it will clear everything out of spark and you're just going to be starting it fresh okay so now let's get actually get into it so i'm going to hit the export button which is the first step of getting it into your all mode report Make sure these settings are all set up correctly, how you want things to go into your report. If it's your first time using Spark, I would recommend leaving things as the default and then just tweaking it from there once you see what it will do in your report. And of course, use it on a, on a test report first. Don't use it in a, in a real report the first time. I don't recommend doing that. Um, if you do have any issues though, you can take advantage of Alamode's timeline feature. So if does something does get screwed up in your report, you can use the timeline to kind of go back in time to where it was how you wanted it. Um, the one thing I'll point out here, since I'm not going to go into everything, is picture size. So if Spark is loading in duplicate photo pages, so if you already have a comps one through three photo page in your report, and when you load in the data from Spark, you're getting another one, so you have a duplicate comps one through three photo page, it's because this is not set to what you're actually using in your report. So if you use the small digital photos, use that. If you use medium or large, just set it to what you use, and then Spark will not load in duplicates. Uh, the other thing I want to point out here is selected charts. So you can click this and right as you're about to hit go or right as you're about to load the data into your report, you can always double check what charts Spark is going to load into your report by just clicking selected charts. And then you can see what charts are going in. If you don't like one of them for some reason, you just uncheck it to turn it off. And that's it. Okay, so just to go over it one more time, when you're in Spark, you hit export and then you hit go. And now at this point, Spark is going to create that file that's going to load all of the data into your all in mode report. So it's gonna take usually 15 to 20 seconds and then we'll get started here. All right, so it looks like it finished up here. And now we're just going to open up this file that it downloaded to the bottom of our screen. So uh, I'm, in, I'm using Google Chrome as my internet browser and so for nearly all of you, unless you've gone in and manually changed the settings in your internet browser for where you want it to download files, it's going to download it into your downloads folder on your computer. And if you're using Google Chrome, it actually, not only does it put it in your downloads folder, but it also places it visually right here. So you can just click on it to open it. Now, if you're not using Google Chrome, you're using Firefox or Edge or Internet Explorer, then when uh, there will be a window that pops up asking you if you wanna save it or open it, just choose the option to open it. It will still be saved to your downloads folder, but if you choose open, that'll, like, that'll just save you a little bit of time. So now I'm gonna come down here and just click that to open it. And it is called a TDCX file. That's what Alamode calls their proprietary format for data. And now the Alamode data wizard has started. So at this point, Alamode has taken over and Spark is no longer doing anything. So this is the Alamode data import window. And you, they give you two options here. You can either choose to create a brand new report where Spark will just load the data into a fresh report, or you can choose to merge it into your currently open report. And this is what I'm assuming the vast majority of you are gonna choose. So 
Click that button to merge into your open report. Make sure the report you want to load into is right here. It'll usually show you the address. The one I have open just doesn't have, happen to have an address for the subject. And then here is where it gets important. You want to make sure and choose the correct option right here. The first one is keep the data in my open report, but merge everything else. And what that means is if you have data in a particular field in your all mode report, all the mode will prevent Spark from loading data into that field. Any field that's blank, Spark will be able to load its information into. But if there's information in a field, Spark, uh, all the mode will prevent it from going in. So let me just show you a quick example of what I mean by that. Let me pull up this report. So right here, all the subject information is going to go in okay because it's blank. But right here, I, ha I just typed in a number here for the low price for one unit housing, but the other five fields are blank. And so Spark will not be allowed to load its data in here because there's information already in there. Uh, but then the other option when you're on that window is replace the data in my open report. And what that means is no matter what's there, Spark is going to be allowed to overwrite it. So if it's, if it's a field where Spark is loading data in, it's just going to be allowed to overwrite. Okay, so let's go ahead and choose this one. And by the way, this, this option is typically for those of you who start reports using templates where the template is mostly blank, but it has a few of your normal comments in there. Maybe you have all the forms in there that you typically use for a specific client. Um, so that you're gonna use this option because then Spark won't be allowed to, to overwrite anything that you definitely don't want to change in there because it's in your template. But then for those of you who start reports where there's already comps in it from a prior report, um, I call it using copy files, but if you start a report where there's already comps in it from prior from a prior report, then you're going to want to choose replace the data where Spark is just going to overwrite whatever's in your report. Uh, so that's what you're going to choose right there. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do it. I'm going to choose this option. So I chose the option to merge, not replace. And so now this process, process usually takes about 10 or 15 seconds again, where all the mode is actually going through and loading it in. And there you go. You can see it's loading in. It's still throwing in some forms here. All right. OK, so it's done now. And you can see that since I chose the merge option, it was not allowed to overwrite here with what the actual low was. It just left it alone. And it filled in the other fields. OK, so that's how it works. Now we can scroll through and see all the data went in. We also get data in the work file, but that's for another video. And uh, that's it. All right. I think we covered everything. Thanks, everybody, for watching.